linear rule of four. These are actually pretty easy, pretty fun. You can see the correlation of what you get when. Let's go right to the examples. The rule of four. When given an equation, right here, there's our equation. Like I told you last year, you didn't even have to rearrange it to get y up. You had to rearrange it last year. This year, it's already done for you. What form is this in? This is called standard. So there's two ways to say it, really. Slope-intercept form or y-intercept form. Okay. So you get y all by itself. Looking at this table of values. So the rule of four, if I have this equation, make a table of values using the equation. So let's pick some numbers. We talked about patterns, finding the slopes and that sort of thing. So if it's not a fraction that we're working with here for our slope, if it's a whole number, I would suggest just using numbers in order. I would just go zero, one, two, three, all right? Make life easy. And then now let's put in zero for our x. So we're going to do two times what minus seven. So if I put zero in here, what's two times zero? Zero, what's zero minus seven? A negative seven. Now let's put the one in here. What's two times one? Two, two minus seven is a negative five. Put a two in here, what's two times two? Four, right? Four minus seven is? Negative three. What's the pattern going on here? Minus two. We, we add two going down over here. What's our pattern here? We were adding one, y over x. Two over one, is that my slope? All right, so see the correlation? So what's this one going to be without even plucking it into the equation? It'll be a negative one. All right, so now we have zero, negative seven, one, negative five, we have all of our points here. Now we can take and either plot these points on the graph to make our line, or we can do like we practiced yesterday, and we can start with our, what is this called? That's our B, that is our y. our y intercept. So you can start there and go down to the negative seven, our slope is 2 over 1, so I'd run 1, up 2. Run 1, up 2. Backwards, left 1, down 2. Or if you are not sure and you didn't like the graphing, you can double check. Do these points. 0, negative 7. Does that work? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, look at that. It's right there. 1, negative 5. 1, negative 5. 2, negative 3. And 3, negative one. All those points are right on there. Whoops, that wasn't a very good line. You guys use your straight edge to make a nice straight line. I'll try to freehand mine here. <coughs> now, on, okay, so here we go. Done with that. We now graph this equation, y equals two x minus seven. In verbal, the verbal description, what is the slope of the line? Positive, negative, undefined, zero? Positive. It is a positive what? Slope. Positive, the slope of the line is a positive? Two. Two. Then it asks, how can you tell the slope from looking at the equation? <coughs> What is it? It is the number, or you need to know it as the coefficient. All right? The number right here with a variable is known as the coefficient. It is the number or the coefficient 
with what? With the x. How can I tell my slope by looking at the table of values? By finding what? Don't say Nemo. By finding the pattern I heard. The pattern of the x and the y. M equals y over x. After you find the pattern. How can I find the slope by looking at the graph? Who remembers that? If I just had this graph, what would I do? I would pick what? What did I just do? Pick what? Yep, you pick two points. And then remember we made a right triangle. To find the what over what? Rise over Nice. To find the rise over Run. Next one, rule of four. Now, who remembers the, uh, the trick I gave you when there's a fraction involved to make your life easier on the tables? When we did tables. Instead of just going in order, zero, one, two, three, what should we do when we have a fraction in our equation? We should always use, what's the first one? zero, and then we need to use the denominator, and then it's opposite, and then we'll just go from there. I'll just, all you can only need to use three of them on the fractions, and we're fine. So let's figure these out now. Zero, what's three-fifths times zero? Zero. Zero. Zero minus seven is? Negative. Negative seven. Now we'll put a five in here. 3 fifths times 5, or 5 over 1. What's my answer there? You could just multiply across and get 15 over 5 and simplify that to what? 3 over 1. 3 over 1, where you can go 5 goes into here once. Once they cancel out, I get 3 over 1, or just 3. Okay, so this turns into 3. What's 3 minus 7? 3 minus 7 is? Negative four. Let's do the pot or the negative five now. Three over five times a negative five over one. These cancel out, make one, but this one makes a negative one. What's three times a negative one? What's three times negative one? Negative three. A negative three minus seven now? What's a negative three minus seven? Yep, a negative 10. Now we don't have a pattern going on here because we didn't go in order, 0, 1, 2, that sort of thing. But now we can go plot these. You can either plot these points, 0, negative 7, which is our y-intercept anyway, that's where we would have started if we're going by the equation, 5, negative 4, And negative 5, negative 10. This I'm going to fit just a barely. And that's the same as if I would have plotted at the negative 7 and I would have went right 5 up 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. End up in the same place. So you choose the method you like to use to graph it. Now let's answer the verbal description. What is the y-intercept of this line? Negative 7. It is a negative 7. How can you tell the y-intercept from the equation? The coefficient. Nope, now we're talking the y-intercept, though. 
It is the, that's called our constant. When we use the slope intercept form. All right, so the B, our constant, is a negative 7. How about the table of values? How can I tell what the y-intercept is just by looking at my table of values? It is the number that what? It's the number that is with the zero or follows the zero. It's the y term with zero. And the last one, how can I tell by the graph? Oh, that's easy. You just look at the graph and see where it crosses. Just look at the graph to see where it crosses the y-axis. Questions on that one? The big thing today to help you out is to remember if it's a fraction, use the zero, the denominator, and it's negative. It'll make your life a lot easier on your homework. All right, real world application here. Yesterday, we received three inches of snow. Thank goodness we didn't. And now this morning, it has started snowing again at the rate of about one half, per, one, one half inch per hour. The total amount of snow can be represented by this equation. X equals the number of hours that it snows. Y is going to tell us the number of inches of snow total. Let's make a table of values. Now, using that hint, what would be the three numbers I'm going to want to use? Zero, two, and negative two. Excellent. Zero, two, and negative two. Zero is the two, and it's opposite. That makes life easy. What's one half times zero? Zero. Zero. What's zero plus three? Three. Now put a two in here. What's one half times two? Cancels out. What do I get? One. One over one, which is one, but I'm not done. Don't go putting a one here. One half times two is one. What's one plus three? Four. 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 Now let's make this a negative two. Crosses out. That's going to be a negative one. So now what's a negative one plus three? Two. Two. Now we graph it, but before we graph it, we can't just throw it on the graph here. What do we need to do? Since it's application, real world. It's a snow day. It's snowing out. We want to represent snow, the graph. What do we need to do? Label. Label it. So we have our x and our y axis. What axis is this? The y. So what do we have to label this side? This side represents what? Total, total amount of snow. Number of inches of snow, total amount of snow, either would work. What is my x-axis here going to be labeled? Number of hours. Great. All right. Now we need to put some numbers on there. We always, always, always start at the what? This is basically our origin, so what do we need to label these? Start at? Zero. Zero and zero. Now for the number of hours, what do you want to go by? Ones? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then how about the amount of snow over here? Ones again? Because we're going by one half, we get a half an inch an hour. So we'll go by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But if you're in the mountains and you were getting five inches an hour, what would we probably have to go by there? Probably have to go by at least fives. Yep. All right, now let's plot that. 
zero and three. So we start at the zero and three. This is where we started because that's how much snow we got last night. Then after another hour, we got another half an inch. So, but this is two hours. So now we go to the two and the four. Two and the four. How about negative two? Can we do the negative two on here? No. Is there such thing as a negative two hours? No. So since this one's real life, what could I do then? Instead of the two hours, I could go by You want to use three? Is that a good one to use with the two denominator? What do you want to use? Not a two, but a four. So let's try that. What's one half times four? What do I get? Two. two. What's two plus three? Five. So you go to the four and the five. <coughs> the four and the five, right there. You see a pattern here? What do we seem to be doing? We seem to be running two and rising one. one. Running two, rising one. Can we continue this? Rise, run two, rise one. Run two, rise one. And then you make your graph. So, why is the graph only in the first quadrant? It's like we were talking about earlier, this, we don't have the whole quadrant on here, you know, we don't have the negative one, negative two. Why, why do we just show the first quadrant? Because it's all positive, so we can't have like a negative one. Right, because just like we explained right here, it doesn't make sense. You can't have what? Right, you can't have negative hours. Doesn't make sense. You can't have negative hours, it doesn't make sense. So you only use the quadrant one. All right, we're just gonna stop there for today. There are, there's one thing I wanna point out on your worksheet, the question for today was, okay, so look at this very first graph we did. One of the questions on the worksheet says, give me some more solutions to that graph. Well, what does that mean? So you just go like... Yeah. You just go like what? You just keep going and give me three more equations or give me some more points. Find some points on the graph or continue here. What were we doing? We were plusing two. So what's a negative one plus two? One, what's one plus two? Three and five. So give me those three other solutions. How can I make it show, the other question that was getting people is how can I make it show that it has an uh, infinite amount of solutions? What do we do on here to make this show that it's infinite? We add the, what do we do? Arrows. Yeah, you add the arrows to indicate that it is infinite infinite amount of solutions just by adding the arrows. So I'm gonna let you get started. That's all we're doing in this day of notes. Pages five through eight in your packet, five through eight. <coughs> 